Hello everyone, good afternoon, it's uh, Tuesday, it's 3 p.m. or 3 and 01 and uh, we are ready to kick off the third episode of Wireless Workbench Seminar today. Uh, today we are discussing about, uh, we enter uh, frequency coordination world and we will be discussing about uh, um, the spectrum and how this is affecting our frequency coordination. I hope my audio is good, you can hear me clear and loud. A uh, little bit of housekeeping before we, we get started. Um, um, please keep your microphones all muted and uh, if you have any question, there is a chat page on the right side of your screen. Uh, I'll try to collect uh, the uh, I'll try to collect the questions all over the, the webinar and uh, answer them at the end of it. So we can uh, we can make sure that uh, all the questions get answered uh, if they are not answered uh, already during the seminar. And uh, if you have additional questions that are not related to the topic of today, uh, you, can, um, you can send them to me and uh, to our amazing team uh, that's always supporting us, the marketing who's sending all the email and uh, reminders around. Mm, you can send uh, together with the, with the registration email. Uh, there is a, there is a form where you can uh, when you can apply all the all the questions that you like that are not related to the topic of the day. Uh, about it, I received uh, more than one question about uh, Sure and Dante. Uh, of course, this is a wireless workbench webinar, so we are not really discussing much of audio. But um, I really think that uh, this is a very important topic and therefore uh, shortly we will announce a session maybe in a kind of couple of weeks from now, we still didn't identify the right day around 20th of April uh, with uh, Augusto who's, um, who's a technical manager at Ordinate and uh, he will help us find out all the tips and tricks about uh, about Dante and uh, how to how to use Dante efficiently and effectively and safely in in our setup with uh, sure network devices. So let's start diving into frequency coordination page. Uh, we already saw it's divided in uh, in two parts. Uh, one part is related to the spectrum and the second one is related uh, to the is more related to the devices that we want to coordinate so oh sorry i have a window here that's a little bit annoying so i remove it on the i have two laptops and i'm always getting confused where i should work um so here i have my online inventory and here I have my frequency coordination page. Uh, on the left side, we have three ways to import uh, scans on, in, the, in the software. So we have, uh, as we saw, we have a live one. In this case, I will run a scan with the XT600. And um, of course, this is, I think, the best tool to use whenever it's available because it's giving us uh, the view from uh, the point of view of our antenna. So what our receiving, what our receiving antennas are really seeing. Uh, this is very good for mics, but uh, might not be the best way uh, for the for linear monitors. Uh, now I'm using the antennas. Okay, I'm pretending to use the antennas connected to my setup. Uh, of course, uh, in this uh, living room setup, it's all a little bit uh, limited, and uh, I have just two antennas sticked uh, in the back of the spectrum manager. But uh, in, a, in a real life, uh, the, the scan most likely would be taken from the same antennas that are running, where our microphones are, are running. 
this is very efficient, in my opinion, for microphones, but may not be so efficient uh, for in-ear monitors because in-ear monitors have, are having a different point of view. The receiver is uh, with the artist on stage and the RF environment might be different. Uh, whenever we talk about RF, uh, we talk about scans, we have a view at a certain point, in a certain point in the space, at a certain point in time, that may not be the same, uh, like even just a few meters away, or with, different, or with different antennas, or with a different setup of any kind. So we always need to bear in mind that what we see might not be exactly the same thing that our antennas are seeing if they are in a different place. Uh, as, uh, as you already know, Dubai has a very forgiving spectrum, so here it looks kind of clean. And uh, for this reason, for our exercises today, we will be using uh, some of our scans that I collected uh, around uh, some different gigs in some different places. Uh, here we have a plot properties on the opposites in the right side of the screen. So what we are looking at. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, okay, let me just double check. Okay, we can see from 30 megahertz to 2 gigahertz in, um, in, this, uh, in this plot, and uh, this is helpful to accommodate the scans that are including portion of spectrums so that are not covered by the spectrum manager. So in case you have a I don't know, TTI, Cadman Creation, whatever you name it, RF Explorer, uh, you may be able to see a wider portion of spectrum and uh, this is, and the wireless workbench can accommodate it. Uh, it can be helpful to see uh, the area immediately below 470 because uh, it's, uh, it's a, a portion of spectrum where we may have a lot of walkie-talkies and they can have an impact on our setup. Now, without going too much in details, uh, these devices are usually powerful, sometimes much more powerful than, um, than our devices. If we talk milliwatt for our microphones and in-ear monitors, they can easily talk watts, uh, five to 10. It depends, uh, we may have, um, if we are using uh, VHF devices, we may have devices not far from our, uh, from our receivers uh, that are, again, 5, 10, 50 watts. Uh, they may be used in big ceremonies. A lot, of, uh, a lot of effort is put to coordinate mass cast, and uh, this, uh, this requires a lot, of, um, a lot of FM receivers that are broadcasting pretty loud, usually, and uh, in an area where mostly it's a lower VHF than we may use. In this setup today, uh, we just have uh, UHF and uh, we will be looking at it. Here we see the portion of spectrum that we are looking into. So 470, 952, because this is the area covered by the spectrum manager, but I may not be interested in the upper part of it, so I may decide that I want to see to look at only 470, 700, that anyway is uh, what is allowed to use for wireless microphone, and I want to have more focus on what I want, what I see. Uh, center is exactly the center of our view, and uh, the span is uh, how wide our view is uh, at this point. Uh, this. Two, these two values, uh, so start and end, center and span, are all related to us. So change, changing one of it, you will change, uh, you will change the others. So if you reduce the span, let's say to 210, uh, you see that now you lost the first. I, I reduced by 20 meg. I lost the first 10 and the last 10 megahertz around. Here we have uh, two values that we can change expressed in dBm. First one I want to talk about is exclusion threshold. Exclusion threshold is the threshold above which we do not put 
frequencies on. But the wireless workbench is not considering to use any frequency that has an energy level uh, over the exclusion threshold. This is something I can change. So I can, let's say, put minus 90, and uh, if the resolution is good enough, you may see that a new blue line appeared here because this is above, um, above minus 90, so, but not about, above minus 85. Uh, what do we do in, pra like in the practical side when we change this uh, threshold? We are considering that in case we need more range, we want the threshold to be lower. We all know that wireless is all about signal-to-noise ratio, so if we reduce the accepted level of noise, we'll have a better ratio with our, uh, with our transmitter, therefore we will have a, more, a bigger range. But of course, uh, sometimes this is not possible because we may not have enough frequencies uh, for our coordination, so we may need to compromise. In a situation like this beautiful scan that we have here in JLT, oh, I think I can go easily minus 95 and still have plenty of spectrum to play with. But if we look at some other scans, that's not the case. Um, other information that uh, we see are the TV channels that are considered the primary exclusion, and uh, we'll have a quick chat about TV channels. Additional exclusions are the exclusions created by the software according to the, um, to the scan that is active. Then we have user and inclusion groups that we will treat uh, extensively in, uh, in the next episode. Then we have markers for our, for our devices, uh, primary frequency markers and backup frequency markers. Um, again, it's something we want to see in some occasion, but we may not love to see backup frequencies when we have maybe 20 microphones and 60 backup frequencies available. Uh, backup frequencies are just confusing for us. Uh, we can decide what the color marker is. You remember I was talking about colors in the property, in the property window. Uh, this is exactly where color can become handy because if I set up correctly my color, I will clearly see my microphone on the scan and when they, where they are placed in the available spectrum. Uh, we may have TV channels or DAB channels. DAB is digital audio broadcast and it's, in, um, it's below uh, the TV channels region, the UHF. It's uh, usually in the, U, uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's not in the UHF, it's usually in the VHF area. Uh, at this point, I don't have much here going on, so I need to simulate that I'm somewhere else. In the spectrum, here I have no TV channels to be avoided, but I can decide that I want to avoid certain channels for whatever reason. Uh, so I can manually do it, or I can work with, uh, in a different way uh, if I'm in one of the countries listed here. Why we only have these countries and we don't have United Arab Emirates, an example? Because United Arab Emirates do not have a TV, scanning, a TV channels allocation. There is no TV broadcasting in UHF. Therefore, there is nothing to, to list about. UAE. Other countries have TV channels, but uh, they do not have a public database of repeaters, or this database cannot be, it's not accessible, or it's not uh, accurate. Therefore, uh, we try to, we, we didn't include it in wireless workbench. Uh, few countries that in, belong to my area, uh, one is Turkey, the other one is South Africa. Uh, sorry to say, both of them have uh, kind of poor spectrum management, so the data you can find here may not be 100% accurate or up-to-date. But that said, uh, 
You may think that United States is much better. Absolutely not. With the repackaging, um, they live in the same condition. United States has a very specific uh, feature in wireless workbench. So that if you are connected uh, to internet, uh, you may uh, grab data from a live database that is consistently updated. And even if it's updated consistently, may not be accurate in this uh, moment because they are moving TV channels around. So I, for the sake of the exercise, I'll pretend to be in Italy and I will set up a postal code uh, that happens to be the postal code of a neighborhood I've been growing in. So I decide what is my city that for who cares is Genova. Wow, we have a lot of city in this. And if I didn't crash the software, but I may have, um, I will receive a list of channels. Lovely. Okay, sorry guys. Uh, no, perhaps it worked. As you can see, I do not have the light on here, uh, online frequency finder database, because this is only for United States for the time being. And so I can search for TV channels in this region. Here, I have a complete list of all the TV channels that might be busy. As you can see, I chose Italy on purpose, and I knew that this would have been the result, because it's one of the most crowded environment. So if I save it, Oh, I find myself completely out of space. Uh, why am I I'm doing this? Just to tell you that this database can be a starting point, but that doesn't automatically mean that once I go on site in this specific location, this is what I really see. Uh, some TV channels might be there, some others may not be received in the position where I'm actually placing my antennas. If you look here, uh, I have a radius, so I can reduce this radius and uh, check only on TV channels that are closer uh, to my place. So instead of 50 kilometers, I select five only. It gets a little, little better. Not too much, but it's already something. Uh, this information, it's a starting point. When I go on site and I really run a scan, I can find that some of these TV channels are not really broadcasting in my direction, are not really received where I am actually. So uh, do not stress yourself, oh, I mean, yes, stress yourself a little bit if you see a scan like that, because the environment is going to be tough for sure. Uh, but do not too much. I mean, be aware that it's, it doesn't automatically mean that all the TV channels will really be busy where you go there. It just means that you have a lot of activity around your venue, and uh, this is something you should take care about. In this condition, the software will use only certain frequencies, because all the busy TV channels are excluded. I can decide oh no, but I don't see anything, any activity on channel 29 and include it in my coordination. Oh, channel 32, yeah, it looks free. I can include channel 32 and then free up some more space. Now, because my home market is UAE, I'm so used not to have TV channels around, I find it's really beautiful, but this is the reality in many, in many of the places where I go. Uh, it's really, you really have a few channels uh, to deal with. This setting has, um, is related to something uh, um, that is in the preferences. So if I go to preferences and coordination, 
I have here a value, minimum spacing from leading edge of a TV channel. So I can decide, I think by default this is 100 kilohertz. So this is what I want to keep usually, 100 kilohertz from an Occupy TV channel and my first frequency. Uh, probably is a little narrow, probably not. Of course, the software will try to do its, uh, will do its best to stay away from TV channels, not to be too close to TV channels. And at the end of a coordination, when all the frequencies will be ranked uh, with a three, two, or one star, this is a parameter that will be anyway taken in, um, taken in consideration. Therefore, uh, it will try to keep you away from, uh, from the TV channels anyway. Uh, there are other places like Japan where by law, you need to stay one megahertz away. That means 1,000 kilohertz. Uh, in that case, this is a parameter you want to, you want to use. Uh, while we are here and we talk about coordination, I just uh, want to tell you a little story that I heard uh, from uh, Ike Simbel, who is a Canadian frequency coordinator, very experienced, and he was telling me that during his uh, young age, back in the end of 90s, uh, early 2000s, the first software in, he has been dealing with was a DOS-based software where you had to include manually every frequency and the software was telling you if it was compatible or not. So it was working kind of the opposite of what work, Wireless Workbench does nowadays. So, Wireless Workbench is telling us what frequencies are good. But back in the days, the software, the first software didn't work like that. You had to put a frequency and the system was telling you, okay, it's good, it's not. Of course, it was working uh, in a scenario where most of the devices had one, two, maximum eight available frequencies. Uh, so it was, it was a different time. But what the software does in the background, it's still the same thing. Uh, asking itself, oh, is this frequency good? Yes, no. Uh, is this frequency good? Yes, no. And then it decides. Create a scenario, and then in case the scenario is not satisfying the conditions we put in the beginning, create a new scenario and check that all the frequencies are compatible. How many times? Can be done 10,000 times. This is the default setting, and it stops trying after 5,000 fruitless experiment. So, it's, this, is, this can be a concern when we are really in a rush. I usually put, these are the default settings. I sometimes decide to reduce these numbers uh, when I'm doing training, but as we see, there is no need actually to change it uh, because we can stop the calculation whenever we want. So, let's save it. We are clean again. We don't have uh, any TV channel for the time being. Another thing that I think it's very important is uh, in this moment, I will import a little more realistic scan. Uh, this is Lagos. Uh, I use it a lot because I think it's really, first of all, because it's a real life scenario and it has a lot of different things going on here. Ah, while I was doing an experiment, I changed something and now I want to go back. So just give me one second. Okay, pretend you didn't see it, um, so you will listen to the full explanation. So first of all, 470, 690 is my spectrum and it's what I want to view. But in this moment, for this exercise, I want to focus uh, a little more. Ah, of course, you can change the parameters uh, using uh, your, uh, your mouse and uh, moving on and uh, changing the dimension of the window up here. The only thing, it's not always very precise and very easy to be precise. Okay, so in this moment, this is my scenario. Uh, I have clearly one TV channel here that is busy, 
And I can decide in this moment to exclude it completely, so it will get red, and I will have my 100 kilohertz uh, guard band. Uh, same for channel 28, it's clearly busy, so I decide to exclude it. Stain 30, stain 31, and so on and so forth. Uh, the other thing that, now let's imagine that I need to calculate uh, the frequencies for uh, PSM 1000, G10, 32 frequency. Uh, now, maybe in these exercises we won't always reach our target. Actually, this is the case, so let me change it. In this moment, I'm not putting much focus on what's going on on the lower portion of the screen. Uh, we'll have a dedicated, um, we'll, we'll spend some time on it. Uh, on the third episode about frequency coordination in a couple of weeks from now. So let's assume that I have uh, 16 channels of G10. Uh, I, I, instead of importing them from an inventory, I decided to just add these frequencies uh, to be faster. And so I, the first thing I want to do is to calculate these frequencies and I get only out frequencies, I get eight frequencies out of 16 that I requested. Now it's nine, and now it's doing all its, ex its experiments, all the passes and the experiments to try to find a combination of frequencies that will give me more than nine frequencies. But uh, it's unlikely that I succeed, and definitely when it starts, like when after few seconds you don't have all your frequencies, it means that most likely it's not gonna make it. Now, the first thing you may want to do uh, is just uh, the most common thing, is just set up here more frequencies. Yes, this is something you can do, but I want now to focus on something else. As you can see, the scan I imported created a list of exclusion frequencies. So what happened is that the software excluded some frequencies, but it's, uh, it has some criteria. So I can see it here. When I go to additional exclusion, I see all the frequencies that are somehow um, not usable, and I see some ranges as well. So ranges of frequencies, uh, some of them are extremely narrow, uh, some other are a little more wide, maybe up to 8 megahertz uh, because they are TV channels and whatnot. Um, here is the moment where our scan peak threshold enters into the game. All the frequencies that are have energy above minus 60 dBm, they are treated differently. They are not just excluded, but we consider that they could be something to worry about more than uh, just exclusion. Uh, one of the things about uh, frequency coordination and frequency management is that we want to be good neighbors. So it's not only that we want to protect our own setup, we also want to be careful with the setup that may be happening next door. Uh, we are all colleagues and we don't want to make our life complicated, so if possible, uh, we try to treat them nicely. Uh, in general, the software is also giving the most conservative and less aggressive configuration in the beginning. If you want to be more aggressive, then you need to know what you are dealing with. Uh, what happens here, if you, I don't know how good is the video, but I think enough, uh, here on top, where my cursor is, we have some little diamonds. Uh, these diamonds are telling me things that are relevant. Uh, so this one, in example, uh, is a generic device, IMD wideband. What does it mean? It means that, let's look a little more in detail at the frequencies. Uh, this thing, may look like um, 
an active uh, an active carrier. An active carrier might be a microphone, right? Uh, so we want to make sure that our devices are not stepping on that microphone too badly. Plus, in this specific with this specific setting, we also uh, make sure that if they produce if they can produce intermodulation with our microphones, this is taken into consideration. Now let's imagine um, that these devices are not sources of intermodulation because they are away from us, but they are just used in the next ballroom. So in this scenario, oops, sorry, I can change the profile of the interference, let's say, of this, uh, of this signal. I can change it in four way, even though I think only three are really useful on a day-by-day -day operation. Generic device that can create intermodulation means something that is around us and can, be, can get extremely close to our microphones or to our antennas, that close that it can produce intermodulation. The other possibility is that it's, I know it's a device, I don't know which device is it, but I'm pretty confident there is no intermodulation happening with my, between my device and, uh, the, and this carrier. Another option is to treat it as a generic exclusion with or without intermodulation. Plus, in case I know what this specific carrier is, I can use a custom profile that is one of the devices that I have in my database, okay? So if I know that here I have a UHFR uh, on a G1 band because that only G1 uh, can be in this, uh, in this portion of spectrum, I can say, okay, this is a UHFR, treat it as a UHFR. Um, now, but let's assume that I know all these devices are unknown devices, generic devices of a show happening in the next ballroom in my hotel. I can also change them altogether. As I said, by default, Every signal, every carrier, every peak over my exclusion, over, uh, sorry, my scan peak threshold uh, will be treated as a generic device, but I can change it and, uh, in example, saying generic device, but no intermodulation happening. Now I save it, I do my calculation again, and I have 15 frequencies available, while before, oh, now 16, I'm all green. So while before, I was having only nine. So you understand that this is making a big difference in, uh, in our calculation, because in this case, I, I, I know that the devices will not intermodulate with my setup, and I clearly tell, I instruct the software to stay away from them, but not too much. Uh, if you're curious, uh, I hope you are, uh, we can see exactly what are the, um, the settings of the generic device in the different mode, sorry. So in this case, uh, with the generic device, I give 800 kilohertz spacing. Doesn't matter, um, of course, I cannot uh, coordinate them, so in all the three modes, they will be the same, is, can be more robust, standard, or more frequencies. So what I do is to give a very big space to, to these devices, and I stay very far away from them. But if I go to generic device with no intermod, of course, the parameters are the same. I just remove the intermod source if box here, and therefore my spacing with for the intermodulation products won't be calculated. If I set up a generic exclusion, what happens is that I stay away from there, but I don't give this 800 kilohertz spacing. 
In this case, I'm taking into consideration that these, these carriers can still intermodulate with me, and otherwise they cannot. And you can see how it, it, it's affecting your coordination when you don't have many, many frequencies uh, free and available. So this is a small, I'd say, a small setting it doesn't look very big, that will prevent you to create problems to yourself. Meaning that if you reduce, if you go into more aggressive mode here, no, because you are afraid to intermodulate with something you cannot intermodulate with, uh, you may run into other issues. One of them is, uh, and generally it's a, it's a less uh, precise um, coordination. So this is what this type of setting can do to your, um, uh, to your coordination. Like you need to take them into consideration and uh, treat them accordingly to the best of your knowledge. So if you don't have devices around you, you may keep the channel spacing uh, because you can still affect them and they want, we want to be good neighbors, uh, but pick out the intermodulation. Uh, otherwise, you may decide that they are exclusions, but you don't know where they are physically. Therefore, okay, you don't give the spacing, but you take in consideration intermodulation products. Okay, I received a question that is exactly, I received two questions actually. One, I hope it's already answered. Uh, yes, you can, um, the question, sorry. The question was, uh, if I can multi-select peaks, uh, yes, you can, and you can select all of them either. Direct message, okay. Uh, how would you know if a device is IMD or no IMD? Uh, that's very much depending uh, if I know it's around me or not. How can I, for a device that I don't know where it is, physically uh, decide uh, if it's intermod, can have intermod or not, the best thing to do might be trying to identify it. So using the directional antenna, try to find out the direction, and then have an educated guess. Uh, there is one more thing that uh, I think it's worth showing in the preferences. Coordination page again. Uh, what if one of these peaks is within an excluded TV channel? Should I, um, should I really be protective with it or not? My answer is most of the times you don't need to be protective because they are shooting from very big distances uh, with much higher power than we do. So if there is a scan, into, there is a peak into an excluded TV channel, you may decide to ignore it as a peak and just stay away from the TV channel. And that's it. Um, I wasn't able to change, change, to change profiles while multi-selecting picks. Uh, you can change them one at a time or you can change them all together. You can change, let's say, four of them just uh, with a shift and select multiple, I guess. So if you select one and you cannot select another one. But you can change all of them together at the same time. This is how we visualize exclusion threshold. There is a scan, that's a more graphic way, or a tab where we have all our frequencies excluded, the level of energy, it's, um, it's stated here, and this is what's making our, uh, our coordination effective for the place where we actually are. Of course, we can decide to import exclusion list or 
we can decide to export to a file our exclusion list. Uh, this can be helpful uh, when the scans are not compatible. Uh, for, uh, from software to software, you may need, in certain case, to change the comma with a dot or vice versa to have multiple softwares speaking the same language, but we don't go there yet. So I hope uh, the exclusion part, the scan peak threshold thing is clear to everyone. And uh, this episode is of uh, training uh, is the only one uh, that uh, will not be repeated on Sunday because it's Easter. So, oh, you were very lucky being here. Um, if you have any question about uh, any of this specific topic uh, or any experience you want to share, uh, this is a moment, a perfect moment uh, to, to type it in your chat window. Uh, next time we'll, uh, we'll see a little more in detail. In this time we, we saw where we don't want our frequencies to be. Uh, the next time we'll see what we can do to have our frequencies in certain places and generally uh, we'll perform the very first uh, official frequency coordination in, in this webinar. And uh, we'll try as well uh, to, to see how this frequency coordination can be related and can be visualized in this, uh, in this format. But I think it's, uh, it's particularly helpful uh, because lets us have um, a visualization of what we can usually not see. Uh, could I share my sample scan, scan file for practice? Uh, Yes, I can, but uh, as uh, I think was Pazi mentioned it, it uh, there, is a, there is a lot of database uh, where you can access the scan, and uh, I promise that with the next reminder email that you will receive, you will get uh, some links. Of, I can put something online, or you can access something that is already online, and um, and try to play a little bit uh, with a uh, real, uh, real life scenario that I think is really useful. When on a stage, where are the best places to take scans for microphones and near monitors? Ho, 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 ho. I promised myself I didn't really want to go in, uh, in frequency coordination technique. Uh, I wanted to keep the goal uh, of the training about how to use wireless workbench for your own goals, but I'm having too much fun uh, talking about it. So I'll give you an opinion that doesn't probably, it's not sure opinion, uh, and definitely it's like it's just a, one opinion. You can, uh, you can play with it, but how I do, uh, I try to gather as many information as I can. So for microphones, my favorite place is the, mic, the antennas that I use for the setup. And possibly, uh, I like to have exactly the same cabling, the same distributor, uh, to see exactly what my receivers will see. The same thing is happening with the near monitors. Now, um, assume that I have PSM 1000, uh, that's, very, that's helping me, because I can take a scan with the very same device that my talent will be using and uh, import in wireless workbench and see it in the, win in the same window together with the other scans that I may have collected during the day. Uh, if I don't have a luxury to have PSM 1000, I have other like PSM 900 or 300 and uh, I, can, uh, I can have multiple antennas or let's say I only have a spectrum manager and PSM 900 or any other device for whatever, like as long as it's in the same band, a good, a good solution is to bring an um, omnidirectional antenna, put it on at the center of a stage and see what the antennas will be seen uh, from that point. That's just an opinion. I know that there are other techniques. Uh, someone doesn't really like uh, to use the antennas that are in use for the show and prefers even for microphones to have, um, to have a scan with omnidirectional. Uh, 
uh, that's making absolutely sense because uh, omnidirectionals are showing us the worst case scenario. So uh, another um, trick that I learned from um, someone who's very good uh, is to use one antenna from the setup and the second antenna an omnidirectional so I have a view of both scenario, like the real life and the worst case scenario. Uh, this is also depending on how your environment is. What I recommend, and uh, on this uh, it's not an opinion, or at least it's a very strong one, uh, do not rely on a single source of information in a single moment. Try to gather as many information as you can, as many information as you can process as well, so depending on your skills and your setup on what's really needed, uh, uh, you, have a, you have a chance to gather multiple uh, information, go for them. If you can have 10, 10 is good. If you can have 20, 20 is better. Another thing is the time. Do not check only once. If you go on a setup, at, uh, you reach uh, 10 a.m. at 12, uh, your control room monitor booth is ready, uh, you take a scan and then you don't scan anymore for the whole day, probably this is not the best way to, to do stuff. You take the first scan at 12 and then you go for lunch and eventually you can let the device run, come back from lunch uh, while lightings are on, uh, the LED screens are on, maybe the first uh, wireless uh, walkies are coming in but maybe there is no security. You take another scan and then you take a Again, a scan when maybe security comes in. Uh, that's very much depending also on your on the type of event you're running. But generally, take as many scans as you can, as many times as you can. Uh, if you can have a frequency plot running for 24 hours, even better. Uh, of course, you will gather more information. You will see a very bad case scenario, but your coordination will be safer. So, I hope this was helpful. Um, I don't see any other question related to, to the scanning and uh, how to visualize the exclusion. So, get ready for, ink. oh yes. Uh, is it possible to combine scans uh, done different, in different times in the same place? Of course it is. Uh, in this case, I'm using a live one and a non-live one. So I'm using the one that I just took with my XT600 plus the one I took in Lagos in uh, 2018. Uh, so yes, you can, uh, you can have multiple scans at the same time. Some of them will be saved and some other uh, will, be, will be live eventually. But yes, of course, you can add multiple scans. Uh, as you can see here, uh, if I add the, okay, if I do not have the XT600 live scanning, I have some space here, but if I had this scanning, all this region goes blue, that means exclusion. So yes, uh, you can have a morning scan and an evening scan. As well as you can, uh, you can have. A, as I said, you can keep the, the scanning going on as much as you you want. Of course, if you are scanning with a Spectrum Manager, uh, you can use it as long as you don't need it as a backup frequency database for accent analog or digital. And uh, if you are having, if you are using a receiver, uh, you can uh, you can scan with the receiver as long as you don't need it to actually work as a receiver for a microphone. So yes, long, uh, the more you scan, the better, the more accurate the information you give to the software, the more accurate your frequency coordination will be. So I hope it was clear for today. In this weird time, sounds strange, but uh, I hope you can somehow enjoy your Easter and uh, as well as I hope I can see you here again uh, in one week from now, next Tuesday at 3 p.m. Thank you very much for joining, and uh, I promise 
I will try to remember that uh, you asked me for uh, scan databases and I will, uh, I will link uh, some of them uh, in the next email that you will receive. Thank you very much and see you as soon as possible. Bye guys.